That's a fun thing with going live. Like, you don't know when um, things are on right now. So you and I could be talking and everyone's going to hear it. Right, Aaron? <laughs> And yes, we know we're live, everyone. But so, you know, I just got to really quickly ask, like, how is Vegas doing? Like, is the weather good and is everyone back in action? Well, we um, uh, the weather in Vegas is an interesting thing because there are people in hell that are glad that don't live in Vegas in summer um, because it is it's it's just hot. You know, and you'll have people say, well, it's a dry heat. Well, so is hanging out in an oven. So it's just a matter of you get used to it. I've been here 30 years. Uh, coming from Western Canada originally, it was a bit of a weather change for me. And um, it's we we just had our three days of fall. Um, <laughs> it's uh, we we just don't have a lot of fall, and then it's just an awesome time of year. And we're in a valley, so it actually gets uh, it gets chilly here in winter. So it does because it's like a. I've always been fascinated by it because you think of as as Las Vegas always being hot and all that good stuff, but. Um, but hey, it's good to know though that it seems like business is kind of still happening very much so. And as I see conferences taking place now, so that's always a good sign. And as us at Global Leaders Organization, that's always a good thing to help our fellow business owners, right? Very much so. It's um, it it was really bizarre because at one point it was entirely closed down, and myself and two friends threw on some rollerblades and rollerbladed down the strip, and it was oh. almost like apocalypse. Wow. There, I, have a, I get goosebumps and I wish that picture was around, but I have a silhouetted shot of me rollerblading down the middle of the, the strip with just the lights were still on. And oh, the, that's and creepy. Every once in a while, they were, yeah, yeah. Every once in okay. a while, there was just like a police officer and we talked to them and said, oh, I don't care, go. It's not like you're going in any places. You just, and it was, it was bizarre but, because to have the strip, you know, where there's just it never, there are never no people. And you needed to all- video that for TikTok. That would have been a perfect TikTok, just so you know. But uh, why? Why? Thank you very much. Yeah. So it could have gone viral, Steve. Could have gone oh, viral, Steve. God. You still can. I don't know. Way to waste an opportunity. Oh my right. goodness gracious! Well, maybe we should talk more about that because it's all about the flawless execution, right? So it's are you guys ready cool. to kick off Afterglow? We Let's are. Do Let's do it, guys. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Afterglow Live Recap Podcast. My name is Sia. And I'm Aaron Greger. And we are the Dallas co-chairs of Global Leaders Organization, and we are your hosts for the Afterglow, where we recap all the wonderful uh, speeches, speaks, fireside chats of the Business Acceleration 2.0 series that goes down on Thursdays, uh, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time at Global Leaders Organization. It's free, so you might want to check it out. But what do we do? We get to kind of uh, rehash our conversation. I want to say gossip really bad, but we're not really gossiping about business concepts. We're actually debating the merits of it, of our previous speaker and our own personal experiences. And who's going to help us make that happen and have an entertaining conversation is Mr. Stephen Posente, the chair out of Las Vegas. Why, thanks for having me. Um I, I really appreciate the opportunity to do this and love the job you guys do. I've, I've you know, snuck, you snuck in and watched uh, past ones and so on. The energy that both of you um, uh, put out there is just awesome. So thanks for having me today. Oh, I'm, that, that's what a great way to kick off a Friday morning. So thank you, Stephen. Flattery will always get you everywhere, especially if it's authentic. I, so, just, I, just, I just read that. So I just made up that crap. <laughs> <laughs> That book did you well, wherever oh, you were. You very much. Got to make friends, influence people, and in all of the ripoffs of those books. So it's it's, it's, it's almost as if like you know these books that these you know authors write actually have some merit, huh? They do. They could, yeah. I know, I know. So so Stephen, speaking of which, I mean, we've met you obviously through Glow, and mm-hmm. you know, and I'm seeing with your background, um, with your excuse me, seminar series. Could you help us understand what is that you do as a business leader and entrepreneur? Well, uh, yeah, I have an intro and in my intro, it says, uh, you know, with his background as, as a teacher and a stand up comic and a successful businessman, he has a perfect blend of laughter and learning. Uh, I just love leaving people better than I found, which is my tagline. 
Uh, one of my one of my companies, GPS for Success, for example, is never be lost again. Um, you know, it's just a matter of giving people a roadmap of of um, of where they want to go and how to get there, and that's that brings my my greatest joy. So, in the last thirty plus years, being on the circuit, uh, going through peaks and valleys, and, and reinventing myself because I know no one out there has had to reinvent themselves. Um, uh, I, I, it's it's been an awesome awesome experience, and then just having the flexibility and uh, to to make those changes, which which is one of the reasons why I just loved our uh, speaker Murph, um, because he just talks about all of the things and broke it down in real life experiences. Uh, it it was great. So when I I, I work with um, uh, primarily real estate companies, but have worked with everything from gifted for, fourth graders to Fortune 500 companies because we all have the same problems. We all wonder, you know, um, how do I get to where I want to go? And and a lot of it circles around, uh, you know, deciding where we want to go, uh, how we want to get there, and especially the why. And um, and a lot of those, uh, almost every speaker, it's like a, a different piano player or a different person like i i you got you got to come to karaoke with me because i do one hell of a version of new york new york but i've heard frank sinatra doing new york new york and liza minnelli do new york new york and anyway what i'm saying is it's the same song just sung differently so if uh, anything that comes from any speaker that you have the opportunity to see strikes you in in a way that it, it makes sense uh, apply it. Education without applications worse than worthless. And so have, well, I was going to say, I have a question for you, Stephen. Yeah. So in regards to, this has everything to do with Murph's presentation about really being clear and like setting, I think he's got seven, and I know um, uh, drawing a blank on his name, but very famous speaker, he had those seven pieces of life too and understanding that. When you're working with people, I think it's really easy for us to say, well, I want to be rich or I want time freedom or I want, you know, like there's these kind of major pack buckets we can put our goals in, mm -hmm. but really understanding what we want. I'm curious as you work with people, do you find that that's probably the biggest hurdle people have to overcome first is really understanding what it is they want? Uh, very much so. And, and it's interesting when you, when you say about working with people, because one of the things that I work with people on is active listening. And that's, that's the ability to not only hear, but understand and to compute. And I love my wife, Carrie, but one of the things I talked about <laughs> to her was, I said, but... well, ask yourself the question, what, what's he saying? Because she, she, we took a course at our church and it was called Love and Respect. And, and she wears she wears um, a lot of the male uh, earplugs. <laughs> like she's always coming back with a, a solution to the problem before I'm even done saying what the problem is. And I just wanted to talk. So it's just <laughs> I don't know, like it was such a paradigm. But it's just a matter of um, when you, when you're trying when I'm trying to get somebody to to figure out what's really important to them, I have to listen and find their hot buttons and then help them realize what's truly important to them. Do they want to be rich because they want to prove something to somebody in, you know, in a, in a past life? Or do they want to be rich, for example, uh, just to have uh, the ability to give freely and, and so on, uh, be you know, up their philanthropic thing? Do they want to be rich just because they're tired of being poor? They're yeah. sick and tired of being yeah. sick and tired. All of those schlocky little things that people say. But it's just a matter of, in answer to your question, um, getting people to realize themselves. I'm finding, like I said, being successfully married this time, if it's not her idea, it's not a good idea. So, <laughs> it's a good lesson learned. You know, I think you very much. That. Everybody write that one down. So it's a matter of when I work with people, get them to come up with the solutions. And a really good counselor or therapist or whatever will ask the right questions, determine someone's needs and wants, and show them and help them find a solution to those problems. And that's what I do when I'm coaching people, or even when I go in prior to a keynote, I'll, I'll send out a questionnaire and talk to the key people. And a few people, not just these people, but these people and these people, and say, well, what what do you think is lacking? What do you think is is a good direction to go? And Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, Steve, we can keep going on on this, but 
I mean, I, and we definitely need you to keep coming back. So you're gonna have to move that schedule around for us because I know we've been trying to get you for like almost a year now. So, um, but we can definitely keep going. So let's bring this tie this together because what you talk about really does play into uh, this week's uh, guest, which is Jim Murphy. We've already mentioned him before. So applying flawless execution for business, um, Murph. And I love that that's his nickname. So creative, those uh, enterprising, uh, you know, fighter pilot folks. But um, he went from farm boy to military pilot to entrepreneur and, and sincerely successful entrepreneur at that. And what he did was apply all his military training, the processes around fighter pilots um, in their training and execution and applied it to business concepts. So let's let's take this where you're talking about you know with your clients and you're asking them about their you know their purposes right like what their value statement is if you will right who they are why they're you know, what their motivation is why is it that they want to achieve that level of success and you coach them through that um murph had made comments about that as part of the alignment process yeah so it, let's it talk about me. alignment guys because you know, we hear the term work-life balance, but he doesn't even use those terms. He put it in a uh, knowing the future of your business is knowing the, um, you know, start of your business, your onus, your why on that. So, you guys, you know, between your Aaron's multiple businesses that she's founded and, and exited out of and Stephen with your coaching and business itself, did you guys actually do alignment or is this a newer concept for you? I, I loved how he aligned he aligned my perception of alignment because his his verbiage, the clear, compelling vision of a destination, the clear, compelling vision of a destination, you know, typical pilot, he has to have the vision and it's clear and compelling. But but like you said, the human performance process that he took us through in his talk was was amazing. Diverse, inclusive workforce um, and and. Uh, but just we having a clear, uh, you know, in Think and Grow Rich, for example, Napoleon Hill, he talks about a clearly defined, well-designed vision of the future. Everybody's saying the same thing. Why don't we do it? You know, and, and we have to step back. And I love the fact that he says, align this and then align your business. If it ain't right here, it ain't right anywhere. And how can you be a great leader, for example, if this hasn't been aligned. So in him talking about sitting down with his wife every three years, and I'm and I just love you guys for for smacking me upside the head because this is funny. Because you made me do my homework, my wife and I went and got our board yesterday, you know, our vision board. And my wife's so cute because she she got she got like letters to go on them. And <laughs> oh my god, I like, love that. Yeah. So here we are going, okay, honey. And she hasn't seen this yet, but I said, stop by the craft store and get a whiteboard and get some stuff because we're going to do our vision board and i get and this was yesterday because you guys said here do your homework Stephen." and i actually did so you know you never know what's going to affect you uh, as far as the alignment so starting with the the realization that alignment starts here and then moving forward is the way to go Sorry to monopolize. No, and but to add to that, I think alignment is so huge because you know there's a lot of decisions to be made in life and in business and all these things. And you can relate that to a business. It can be super like, is this going to get me closer to this goal? Yes or no? And it's just a very simple. Or is this aligning with with what I want or where I am? It's not, okay, move on. And it can be very simple, yes, no questions, working with clients, adding a product line, uh, you know, doing all these things where it's like, it, it, it be, we, we overthink things and we try to make things really complicated. But if you're really centered and understanding that, it, it really is a simple yes, no question. Oh, I, I, I actually just wrote down, do your vision board under comments because I just wanted to remember that and not forget it because- I don't have a vision board. I've ever, actually never done one. In fact, I had a girlfriend offer me to sit down and say, let's do a vision board together uh, and figure, you know, what you want to do with your life. And this was right after I left corporate America, by the way, when you lose your sense of identity a little bit and trying to figure out what's next. And when Jim had said, look, let's have those family meetings, include your you know, spouse, your children, because 
when you launch these types of endeavors, a business, it's going to be all encompassing and everyone has to basically row that boat together. Right. And uh, having the family participate in that vision board is extraordinarily compelling because now you've given accountability to not just yourself and your partner, but the children, you know, to, to be part of that whole process. And I think that's a great way of pulling everyone together, which again, what he's talking about with alignment is marching to the same goal, understanding what that goal is. Um, what did you guys think about that statement? And very early on, he said, yeah, there's businesses that talk about their mission statement but it doesn't apply beyond one level, maybe possibly two levels. It was the, um, uh, what was it called? The Dunbar number, how it becomes, it, how it becomes ineffective over a course of like number of people um, in its ability to communicate. Do you guys see that as being applicable to smaller businesses? We don't have, you know, 50, 100, 200, you know, 1,000 employees. Is it even more heightened if it's a smaller group of people? Well, I think the mission statement's one of those BS. I, I think it's very important. Don't get me wrong. I don't think it's BS. I think it's a check mark that people do and just they don't put much thought. It's like a rehearsed statement that is supposed to mean something but means nothing. And I think if you're a one man show to a thousand person employee, it's super, super important. And I do want to go back to the, um, the family thing, I think this is so important because I think people keep their kids out of decisions of life and they're just like, we're going to drive the bus. And um, and I know, again, my kids are young, so who knows if this will work, but like everybody has goals in our house. Everybody has three things they get to pick every year that's really important for them to do. And like we had a really big decision we were making about a purchase of a business out in Hawaii. And we sat down the kids and we're like, this is what we're thinking. What do you feel? Do you like this idea? Do you hate this idea? Do you get excited about this? Do you want to? And we made them part of the decision. So it wasn't just like, hey, we're going to do this. Let's go. So I really think that's important. I really, really think that's important because it shouldn't be we do this. And I'm not saying your kids should be making massive business decisions, but I think <laughs> you should have them involved in what's happening uh, so they understand. So, Stephen, I'll pump back to you on the mission uh, you know what we're going to say we're going to say the same thing like we were saying people say the same thing and i didn't really realize why how cool having my parents as parents was until i look back and we had a we had a cottage up at La lac saint anne in, you know in alberta canada and my mom at some point or another would sit the five of us down my brother who's a year older my sister who's seven years younger than myself at the table and we talk about you know, the last year, and we talk about the next year, and we talk about what we want to do together. And we and I didn't realize what was going on. I thought, you know, dad, dad, by the fact that mom had to drag him to the table, thought it was silly. But by the by the end of it, I think that's one of the reasons why we have a cohesive, uh, highly productive family that we do. I love my brother and I love my sister and I see all these other people that are on different pages. Then looping it around to later in life and I'm getting people to take their their vision boards and, and sometimes as speakers we're a little hypocritical because it's been a while since I've done one. And so getting <laughs> people to go out and, and get the board and then actually doing it. And then I get people to shrink it down to eight and a half by 11, for example, and put it on the fridge. And yeah. engage the kids, for example, and say, "Here's <clears throat> here are the things that that Daddy's going to do, and Mommy's going to do, and so on, and we do together." And now, here's the biggest thing, and here's the end result: we're all going to go to Disneyland. We're all going to, and so every yeah. time, every time I'd be off track, and my kids would just kind of walk by and go, "How are you doing with your goals, Dad?" <laughs> and I'm going, "Uh, good, son." I love it. I love it. It's a great it. example. It, it is what he defines as the high definition. Oh my gosh, I can't speak English. High definition destination. So it could be anything. It could be Disneyland, for example. It could be we're going to get into a house. You know what I mean? Or it could be something, you know, uh, we're going to have savings or, you know, it could be something as long as it's something that everyone understands and agrees upon and, and they really want it. Right. And I really like that because. He said there is different steps to flawless execution. 
there is the alignment component that we all have talked about. And by the way, uh, anyone that knows anything about Stephen's family, um, Vince, who happens to be married to Michelle Lemons Pacente as well, who happens to be the CEO and founder of Glow. But your family is incredible. The more I learn about you, Stephen, the fact that Vince is, uh, you know, crazy man, downhill professional, uh, I mean, not pro downhill Olympian, uh, you know, that is just crazy to me because that tells me there's a lot of discipline, support, and determination in your family. And it's just really awesome. So you're fortunate. Yeah. And it's and it's been awesome because my, my sister released uh, three CDs under the Child of God. Uh, she's a musician and producer so and, cool. stuff, and then started C Agency. And she has she's a talent, a talent agent. And I somehow, even with all my ADD and all the excuses I could give, um, went on to be in in uh, uh, one of the top one or the top one percent of all the real estate agents in North America. Then named uh, the top real estate speaker in North America. Like you know, and with all our flaws, something inside us, thanks to our parents, was allowed us to be great. And Mom said something got you know Walter Gretzky, for example, who's a who was Wayne Gretzky's father. Somehow, uh, his Wayne's mother and father allowed his subconscious mind to accept the fact that that he could be the great one and so if the small voice inside our heads is saying that we can't be great uh we won't be great and so yeah. it's it's a convincing process and then getting like we said aligned with it and, and acceptant in the fact that greatness is okay you know what there's so many things you know money isn't everything but it ranks right up there with oxygen you know, it's just a matter of, you know, there's so many things, you know, I saw a saying, it said, money's overrated, just ask somebody who doesn't have any. Um, <laughs> it, you know, it's a matter of accepting the fact that it gives freedoms or time or the things that we can we can do. And thanks for complimenting the family. I, I mean, it's a, it's a blessing every day. But the HDD, and then he talks about, uh, then Murph talks about strategy. And, and I love the fact that he said, it isn't just one fighter pilot sitting there doing the plan. It's all of them. They plan, they brief, they execute and debrief. I mean, you know, and just love the fact that there's a pursuit of flawless outcome. And that ties into everything. Um, we, if, if everybody that we come in contact with, we empower to have a, have a desire to have a pursuit for a flawless outcome. Keep in mind, anticipated perfection is predetermined failure. It, there isn't going to be a flawless outcome. There is no perfect. But the fact of the matter is, when the secret came out, and I'm not trashing the secret, but there ain't no secret. If we decide what we want, we put it in the universe, and we actually do something about it. It's the do it's, something part. Yeah. Oh, isn't that crazy? I got my board. Okay, where is the riches? <laughs> oh. It was just go. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and I, I, I'm loving that you brought that up because. I don't want to give everything away of that conversation. You really need to listen to Murph like in, like in person. He's extraordinarily compelling and it's very exacting. So anyone that wants to understand from a hundred thousand foot view is plan, brief, execute and debrief. I think the debrief is the one thing that I don't think we do enough and I'm guilty of it as much as possible because life happens. We get busy, but we really need to make that time. And I know Aaron's been very good. We we've, tried many times to say let's just schedule this one time and let's make it happen it's hard it's hard to do but we have to make it a priority do you do a debrief steve or i mean aaron you want to add in well no i was just going to say i wanted to back up on that whole the whole story of this because i think it's important to note too one of the things that kind of was eye-opening to him in this plan execute brief type thing was that the air for the military they let these young kids do I, like they have them trained so well and they have belief so well that these young kids will execute these missions that the higher ups uh, just sit back and not, not, but they let them execute them. And, you know, his point of business is how many people, how many businesses are feeling that confident? And to your point, then, you know, of course that debrief helps with all that, but how many businesses are that confident that they just sit back and believe that, 
their people are going to execute this mission as needed. And it's just, that was his real eye-opening moment. So anyway, go ahead, Stephen. No, that was, it, was, it was awesome. And to answer your question, uh, when I'm working with people, I think every night they should do two things. Number one, they, sh they should have a journal. My journal's right here. And it has one thing you're grateful for and one thing you learned that day. Now picture this, let's say that at the end of one year, you have, you know, and sometimes when we have our peaks and valleys and all of those things, maybe you just start flipping through things you're grateful for because you've forgotten you got away from it. But could you imagine on October 20, whatever, next year, uh, 29th, next year, you open your, your, and you've got 365 things that you learned you're going to be the smartest person you know, but you go through and you, because we, we keep forgetting things we learned and, and it's the application, whatever. But if you just every night put one thing you're grateful for and one thing you learned that day, and maybe the one thing you learned that day is not to do something. Uh oh, somebody's head's going to explode. Sorry. Mind blown, mind yeah. blown. I want to drop the mic, but mics are too expensive to drop. You don't want to do that. You sound like the makings of an incredible book. <laughs> and uh podcast. So again, if you for those that are looking to create their own branding and personal branding of their value and their credibility and all that stuff that you're trying to establish, um, we are in a digital media age, right? For everybody. So how do you differentiate yourself from competitors? Keeping that journal and doing a review and compiling it to me just sounds like a a lot of self-reflection and B, what I mean, you're not reinventing the wheel, but what what a great way to share some wisdom that we're all probably most likely going through. It's extraordinarily relatable. So sorry, my, I just got super excited on that because. Sorry, what a compliment that is. Holy cow. You know what? It, good, it. Teachers, good teachers teach, great teachers inspire. My whole my whole focus is, is and, I, and I open people's minds because similar to Murph, minds are like parachutes. They work way better when they're open. So if we open our minds and all of a sudden we have these epiphanies and then, and, and because I don't know what I'm going to say that's going to make see his face. Go. <laughs> and I love it. What a compliment. That's, that's my paycheck, you know, yeah. and we could, we get paid to do what we do, but it's a matter of, I said something and you went, holy crap, one little thing, one little tweak, one little adjustment, one idea can change my world. And that's, that's, that's the whole, the whole thing. I didn't mean to derail too much. It was just, uh, no. again, just with, again, with what Murph has been talking about with flawless execution. So now that we've got an idea that I planted in your head, hint, hint, which I think you really should do because you're already doing the work. This is now just extracting that data, right? It's no, it's no different than what, quite frankly, what, um, in technology today, why artificial intelligence is existing in machine learning is because you're taking all that raw data, i.e. your daily entries, and compiling it into a way that's digestible information and it's palatable for humans to absorb. So there you go, sir. Um, I'm now expecting and looking forward to your execution and no, uh, greatly look forward to it. Is, so, there, a, is there an excuse area? <laughs> there is no excuse, but it is part of the alignment. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And that's addressing, right, where where that might be. So uh, it's just a little inspiration, nudge, nudge. So, so Stephen, it's been such a pleasure to have you. I know these 30-minute conversations go so fast, and we can keep going. For those that want to get to know you in Las Vegas, I didn't ask you this earlier, and I should have asked you this. Why did you join GLOW? And then as a chair, no less, because that's a lot of time dedication. Uh, it's interesting because it would have been easy to say no, but um, Michelle, um, Missy, I call her, uh, uh, it, 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 my brother gets frustrated because he says, I just married a female version of you, meaning you're, Missy Missy, and I are very similar in a lot of ways and, and Vince feels ganged up on sometimes because <laughs> it'll be Missy and I, and Vince is going, yeah. anyway, so um, when we've been saying we got to do something together for years. And when the opportunity came up and the amazing opportunity that the Global Leaders Organization or GLOW uh, came up, it was a natural to say yes. Um, I, I try not to overpromise and under deliver and sometimes just baby steps are better than none. But uh, when, when I said yes, uh, shortly after Vegas closed down. And so 
it's been a matter of, of virtual and so on. And now it's almost like, you know, the foundation is there and the house is ready to be built. So why I joined the organization is Michelle originally asked me, I evaluated. And um, I just recently, and I have to admit this, realized I need a co-chair. I need somebody, I need somebody who's the yin to my yang. I need somebody because I'm a high energy idea guy, whatever, but implementation is a weakness. And that's one of the things it talks about, or every talks about, get the right people on in the right seats and the right bus. Thank you, Jim Collins. And then then drive in that direction. And like like he said right at the end, happy hunting and kick ass and take names. There comes a point where it's you stop building the foundation and you build your house. And that's uh, a, a long way of putting it, but it just, it's an amazing opportunity, Glow is. I love it, I love it. Okay, so for those that wanna get a hold of you, Stephen, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, right now it's at stephenspeaking88 at yahoo.com. stephenspeaking88 at yahoo.com. I'm just in the middle of, I've got uh, the Steve Senti group and whatever and reworking and retooling uh, the companies. And in the next month, I will, commit to you that uh, it will be rolled out and one of those things will be reaching back to you guys and tapping into your blog uh, expertise. Put it on your vision board. It's the first thing that needs to go on your vision board. Okay, here, you're on. <laughs> here, no, no, I'm taking you off here. Here, hold on. I want to do a screenshot. Hold on for a sec. I'm going to do a screenshot of you guys right now. And that's <laughs> On my vision board. I'm just awesome. going to take that, print that, put it in the corner, and that I will love it. You know, I can give you a, a clean screenshot just to inspire if you'd like. I'll, I'll send it to you later. <laughs> that would be great. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, thank you so much, Stephen, for joining us. Aaron, let's talk about this. Um, why GLOW and what's going on with GLOW? So this is all part of so we talk about GLOW. GLOW stands for Global Leaders Organization. So it's GLO. Uh, this is an organization for entrepreneurs, not startups necessarily. You have to meet a certain criteria, but uh, it's an international group. There's all kinds of things outside of just pure networking. There's access to capital, education, all kinds of things. So uh, as Sia mentioned, we're the co-chairs of Dallas. Stevens in Vegas. Uh, please reach out at withglow.glo.com. You can sign up as a premium member. You get access to VIP when we have speakers of VIP, live events, all kinds of great stuff. Uh, so we'd love to have you join us. Again, head over to withglow.glo.com. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to any of us via LinkedIn. Love it. And so, and again, if you like speakers like this, it is free to join the Thursday Business Acceleration 2.0 series. We are... Um, having Mr. Joseph Barasanzi. He's actually uh, an existing guest that has returned back, but he's gonna talk about ESG, Explain for Small Businesses. So if we're looking at um, social responsibility and all that good stuff that we're, um, a lot of investors are looking for when they're looking to invest into uh, organizations, uh, definitely hit it up and check us out. Again, it's every Thursday, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. You can find uh, the Global Leaders Organization um, YouTube channel, Facebook channel, or if as a member, you just simply log into the member site and you will be able to see it with uh, in our own member site. What's ESG? It is, I knew you were going to ask me, I just closed it out. <laughs> it's um, environmental, social, it's, it, it's the, um, oh, son of a sea cook. It's like, to, I can look it up, I just don't know. It's, it, oh my God. Eth ethics, growth, no, ethics. Sustainable growth? Sustainable growth. Sustainable like growth. That, yeah. Can we go with that? Environment, sustain, environmental sustainable growth. I think it is. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's about again, being kind. Environmental social governance. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Close. Thanks, Joseph. Well, you know, you know, it's sad. I knew I should have copied and pasted that down in my notes today, but you know, this is what the joy of live is. So, guys, thank you so much for your time. Everyone, please stay safe. And um until then, I guess we shall all see everyone on the Afterglow. Bye now. See you soon.